Hey guys, what's up? My name is Ben, and today we're going to talk about some really cool battles that you can have in an arena setting and put that into your Dungeons & Dragons campaign. So, let's go. All right, hey, and welcome back to uh, Dungeon Mastery. My name's Ben. Um, we're going to so what we're going to be trying to do with this is uh, we want to try to put out a video every week, but it's not really feasible for us to have uh, me write 15 pages worth of content and Brian paint two pieces of art uh, every single week. So on the weeks in between the big episodes, uh, we'll do little side episodes. Um, it'll just be me talking about maybe some cool D&D stuff or maybe we'll have Brian at some point do some kind of art tutorials and stuff. So we'll try to tie it into the episode before if we can. Um, and so we're gonna, what I want to do today is talk to you guys about uh, some really cool like Colosseum arena kind of battles that you could do. Um, I think the arena can be a really fun place to, I mean it's a really cool concept that you see in D&D &D all the time, right? Whether it's a a fighting pit underneath the castle or some big giant uh, coliseum like the one you would see in Rome, there's always going to be something like that to pop up. And it's a really good opportunity for you as a dungeon master to give the players battles where they basically will have to fight with one hand tied behind their back, right? You can make a lot of weird rules, a lot of weird settings, and you don't have to come up with some convoluted reason why they would have to, you know, be fighting unarmed in, uh, in a regular campaign setting. So uh, it gives you a really cool opportunity to do some different things and have some really interesting battles. So uh, I guess we'll start by saying like it, it would, it, there's many ways that you can kind of set the stage and get people into the idea of there being a Colosseum here. Um, I ran a campaign recently and the way that I had it was that, uh, you know, it was the very Roman style of, of, of Colosseum. It was the capital city of this large empire and as the people are approaching, um, there had been this big war there. And as they're approaching the castle, they can see that the castle walls are all scorched from dragon fire marks and and ballista and some of the the towers have been crumbling from the from the battle and all the ballistas up on the up on the turrets and the and the walls were all pointing out east and then when you look out to the east you can just see this big long field of uh, they were called the sawn and crucified it was captured enemy soldiers who would be sawn in half across the middle and then just the upper half of them crucified into this big giant field of things and it, it had clearly been uh, months or maybe years since this battle had taken place because you could see that most of them were skeletons or decomposed or you know things along that nature that's a really cool setting setup when you're coming into this castle, coming into this uh, this city, because it gives you a really good feel for what you're going to encounter when you get there. Uh, and that was something that when we did the last episode on the Thracian, we talked about uh, how after Spartacus was was executed was uh, was defeated, his followers were executed by being crucified along the Appian Way, and that is kind of where I got this from uh, in the in the Thirty Years' War uh, between Sweden and and the Holy Roman Empire. They were sawing people people in half and, and doing all kinds of terrible things. So I just kind of combined two, you know, horrific medieval tortures into one kind of thing that seems hopefully a little bit unique. And so then when you get to the town, you're passing through the suburbs around the outside and you head down to the main square, which has this huge coliseum. Um, and then, you know, it's just this big bustling street corner. There's people coming and going all over the place, all different languages and, and races of, uh, you know, elves and dwarves and all kinds of different stuff passing around in this in this big square. And um, there's a fighting school on one cor corner where you've got some guys outside who are training in the different fighting styles. And then there's people outside by the coliseum them and they're they're scalping tickets or like you know trying to get people to come in and see them or, or taking bets for the fights and then in the other corner you have this big this big tavern where uh kind of a rowdy place kind of like a the place sort of place you'd see outside of like a football game where you've got you know it's opened up to the outside a little bit you've got a bunch of people sitting around outside you got a bunch of guys who are really excited about going into the games they've got uh the banners or the streamers or whatever uh you know for the showing the colors of their favorite teams and that kind of thing and uh and so then when you get there, you can kind of talk to somebody at the bar, you can talk to somebody at the fighting school, talk to somebody at the Coliseum, and what you'll find out is that, yes, they have gladiators.
gladiator games with slave soldiers, but they will also accept, you know, if people want to join up and you can make them a lot of money and you can get a lot of fame. And, um, you know, this is one of the most you know, popular places in, the, you know, this is basically the, the, the football stadium of, of the city. So it's an easy way to kind of get in with, uh, with whoever, you know, you need to get in with. And one of the things with an arena, you know, if you're going to put the work into making an arena and putting it into your campaign, you want there to be some reason for the characters to maybe want to be involved with it. Right. Uh, there's always the you could have you could have them captured and forced to fight in an arena. That's kind of one that you see all the time in, in media where, you know, they get grabbed and then they go to the evil guy's kingdom and then they have to uh, they have to fight for their survival. It's a pretty good way to get it get it in there. Um, there's there's other ways you can do it. So what I usually like to do is to give um, my players some choice, right, in whether or not they want to do this or not. So, like, for instance, a good example would be, uh, what if they have to meet a guy, and he's he's maybe maybe he's the superstar gladiator that they want to meet, or maybe it's a very wealthy uh, man in the city that they need a piece of information from, uh, and they have to meet him, but the only but nobody knows who they are when they show up, so they have to kind of earn a name for themselves. And one of the odd one of the opportunities to do that comes from becoming a famous fighter. Maybe this guy is that they need to meet is really into the into the games, and he goes to them all the time. And if you can become a famous fighter, then you have a really good opportunity of getting to talk to this guy. Um, could just be money, right? Could be something as simple as that. It could be an item that they're giving out. Maybe they're having a, a, a day of games. And if you can succeed in three battles in the arena, then you get this magic item. And maybe it's just a good magic item. Or maybe it's, you know, the MacGuffin that you need in order to open the, you know, the secret door to the next part to advance your, your campaign. Uh, maybe they 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 want to they need to kill the guy right maybe the the main gladiator is the guy they have to kill and they can't uh, they can't get in there without having some kind of gladiator credibility or maybe they can challenge him maybe there's a guy they hate and they want to challenge him to a duel and they have to have it in the arena that's another way to get people in there um, you don't even need to to have them fight in it either right if you're gonna put an arena into one of your cities you can just have it be something where they can they can bet on it right like you can you have fighters and you can do a whole thing where they go down and meet some of the fighters and talk to them and they can use their perceptions and their sense of motives to try to see if they can size these guys up and figure out who's best and uh, and then they can bet on the fights or one of their friends can enter and everybody else can bet on him to win hopefully that'll happen um, but yeah so there's a lot of cool things you can do with an arena there's a lot of cool ways you can put people into it and have it be have it be more of an organic thing where it's like okay now you guys are here and you have to fight in this arena so you can give them a few options as to why their characters would want to show up and take part in this so once they get into the arena there's some really cool things you can do with the battles it's kind of like what we were talking about last week with the thracian where basically you know anything that the that the people that run this city could capture right whether it's a demon from another dimension or you know just they don't like elves and they make elves fight each other whatever f prisoners from prisoners of war from a from a battle or whatever whatever they run into uh, they probably will capture it and you could run into this in the arena there's really is limitless what sorts of crazy things you can throw at the players um, one thing that's that that I think would be that can be pretty interesting is that you can change the rules of engagement, right? So with the Thracian gladiator, he had to fight in that specific type of gear, right? And it doesn't matter if he was a, grew up as a spear fighter, he had to learn how to use the short sword and the shield. So it could be a thing like that. It could be like a like a Kirk versus Spock thing where these guys have to fight and you have to use this crazy weapon that you've never seen before and your character might not be proficient in. So even if you're a badass warrior, you might have a little bit of trouble using this piece of equipment that you've never used before. Maybe you got to use a shield and a sword and you're a spellcaster, you know, you could easily ditch that stuff, but it's going to take you a turn or two to get out of your armor so you don't have that arcane that uh that 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 arcane spell failure chance. That 20% chance that you're going to blow a spell uh, because you're wearing armor. That could be a really interesting thing where you're being chased around by this big giant dude that maybe you could take, but you got to try to get all the armor off while you're running away. Uh, you could have people fight unarmed. That's an interesting thing. I, in, in the arena that I was talking about, I had the party get in there and they had to fight against, they had to fight unarmed, but 
the catch was that the the guys they had to fight was an equally sized party of all spellcasters. So it ended up being kind of a tricky situation for some of the fighters trying to knock guys out. Uh, and um, and that can be kind of an interesting setup. Uh, you can do one of the things, this came up in the episode last week too, where the, just the portcullis goes up and you've just got like a billion rat men or goblins or kobolds or something. Just this swarm of monsters come running out that you have to face. Or it could be one giant monster, right? Like you got a rancor situation. Uh, where you can even have like the trainer be there part of it right like you have the druid and his dire lion and you've you're you've got a you know a, a knife and like a stick and you've got to try to figure out what you're going to do to stop these guys uh it's a cool way to make your characters make your players scared of something that they wouldn't normally be scared of uh make them try to think of a new way to approach things uh, you could also take away magic, right? What if, what if uh, before the uh, the arena battle, they put an anti magic shell over the the Colosseum, right? They have these things in the corners that can generate them, and it creates this bubble of anti magic around the building. So now you've got your spellcasters are stuck with their quarter staffs, and you're going up there. Uh, your, your fighters have a little bit more of an advantage. Um, that could be a really interesting thing. Maybe it limits everything. Maybe you could still use your spell like abilities. Probably not, I would say, um, you know. But it could be really interesting to try to see your see your uh, your eight strength uh, spellcaster trying to trying to grapple with with even if it's just the goblins. It could be a really exciting, interesting thing to try to see who would win a fist fight between your sixteenth level, twelfth level wizard, and you know a goblin who has a couple levels of ranger. Uh, so that could be really cool and interesting. Um, there's always the traditional ones, right? You gotta you get thrown to the lions, you get thrown to the bears. Uh, one interesting thing could be more of like a, um, the sort of thing you saw in the second the Star Wars prequel where you've got them kind of like chained to a post. So one of the things I had was I had a, I stuck a post in the middle of the, the arena floor and then all four characters would be, so the post was like this, the characters are at uh, cardinal directions chained to the um, change of the, the post. So they can maybe have, you know, 15 to 20 degrees of movement this way. They can maybe come over and help the guys on either side like this. But for the most part, it was the four doors opened. You had like a scorpion, a, a lion, um, a bear, and I think a couple displacer beasts or something. And they came out to attack the party from the four directions at the same time. And these guys are each kind of having to solo some kind of monster that may or may not be a match for them. And uh, it ended up being kind of hairy where you had, you know, one guy finished off his guy early and had to keep coming over to help the other two guys because the uh, they, they were in a little bit more trouble. Something like that could be a pretty cool way to do it, right? Or maybe, uh, you know, one of the battles that I had in there was a, it was a wizard and he was like this crazy wizard and he had these two gorgons that followed him around the, the giant bulls that can petrify you and stuff and when you came into the arena floor you could see the uh, the petrified uh, remains of of the things that ha this guy had already beaten right it was some kind of battle royale situation where this guy was on his like his third battle of the day and um, he'd already just wiped out a ton of a ton of dudes right you could you could do that with the giant monsters too right if you're gonna run into a rancor situation you could just have when the portcullis opens and the guys walk out the party walks out just just blood and guts everywhere dead bodies sp spread about all over the place could be a really fun way to set the tone for what they're about to run into. Uh, it's a cool thing where you don't have to, um, the party really has no idea what to expect going into the battle, so it's no easy way for them to prepare for it. And then like you have that visual of just this iron door and it goes up and you just, you have a very limited amount of time, roll initiative, you have a very limited amount of time to adjust to what you're looking at and figure out what's happening. Um, so there's some cool things you can do with that. Uh, one of the things that they did in, in actual Rome that was really interesting was that they could bring in, they brought in water and they would flood the Colosseum and they would have naval battles in the floor of the Colosseum, which is just mind blowing to think of, right? So I did that in the campaign I was running where there was a, we flooded the Colosseum, they flooded the Colosseum. I mean, it's easier in D&D, &D, right? You just have a bunch of create water spells or something along those lines. And, uh, and you flood the Colosseum and then I had the party in a little rowboat and they had to fight like this warship that had a bunch of orcs on it. 
that's pretty cool because you have no room to maneuver and you and on top of it like one of the things that is important to incorporate when you're doing these arena battles is the the audience right it's something that you don't have for many other battles you have a whole like stadium football stadium sized thing full of people that just they want to see somebody get pulled apart. They want to see somebody die. And uh, if it's if it's you, that's bad for you. But parties, the, the the people watching it are gonna love it, right? So one of the things you can do with this is kind of give out uh, like style points almost, right? So if your guys are doing awesome and kicking butt, then then the part the the crowd might 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 join you, and then. You know, it doesn't really help you that much. It's not like you're going to get any bonuses or negatives if the crowd's booing you or cheering you. But it's an interesting flavor thing that you can bring in as the DM. Like, oh, the party, the, the crowd seems like they're starting to turn on you. Like, that, that was an awesome move you just did. Uh, you're hearing some cheers now where everybody was booing you before. Uh, so something like that could be interesting, right? It kind of give you a little bit of flavor of here's how the city is feeling about you. Here's how the people are feeling about you. Here's how well you're doing. Uh, so it's another thing where if, if you're fighting the, the town hero, maybe the crowd won't be so happy if you start beating him up. Oh, another thing you could do would be the, the Harry Potter thing, right? Where like the, where they have to fight the, you know, where he has to go in and fight the dragon and he has to beat it in a certain time or whatever that was. Uh, it could be something like that where you're at a trial, but not against not necessarily against the thing you're fighting, which of course that thing's gonna try to kill you also, but you have to beat it faster than like the other people in the in the audience, right? Or the other people in the in the competition, right? Some kind of a it was a goblet of fire, one of those kind of deals. Like that could be kind of an interesting thing to do. What if like you have a, 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 a you know a member of the party is kind of like suspended over some flames in the middle of the arena and as you're fighting the 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 character is being lowered down towards the fire to start getting burned so not only do you have a certain number of rounds to kill all the bad guys uh, and save your friend or but you can also like maybe if you're not going to get him in time you have to find a way to get that guy out of there so that he can like help you and start start assisting you in the combat um, or maybe he's a spellcaster and he can start shooting some spells while he's hanging upside down, tr like trying to not be burned alive. Whatever it is, um, there's just a lot of really cool things that you can do. And the more you think about it and the more you kind of get into building these out, um, the more I think you'll start to realize that uh, you can do really cool things with the terrain, with the type of characters, the type of monsters are going to fight, and also with the the rules of engagement, what you can carry and what you what you're not allowed to use. It's a really cool way to take a party, especially one that's very powerful, and kind of bring them down a little bit and have them be battling in ways that you know. Uh, it, it, you'll see it a lot with these characters that that do a lot of min maxing, right? I'm awesome at this, but I suck at everything else, and now it's going to be like, well. You know how you didn't make a well-rounded character? Here's some battles that are going to really highlight that. And uh, and that could be really fun to run, and it could be fun for the players. Um, so, I don't know. Hopefully this has been useful to you. Uh, thanks so much for watching, and uh, if you want any more information, I'm going to put up uh, a little bit more of the descriptions and some of the, the the stats and stuff that I used. I'll post it onto the Patreon so you can check that out if you're interested. And uh, thanks, and we'll see you next week with another big episode and a bunch of really cool art that I can't wait to show you. All right, thanks. Thanks.